Uh, I'd like to welcome up uh, Clofa Desotel to give the spe sermon on that vision thing. Ooh. Words. Nice tie. Crossword puzzles. However, the in crossword puzzles, vertical and horizontal. So my words to you today, they have a vertical purpose as well as a horizontal purpose. So, <laughs> you, thank, thank you, Toby. Uh, I gave him the, uh, he asked me about the songs. I said, I trust you, Toby. Go for it, dude. <laughs> Not easy to get in touch with this guy on Facebook, email, texting, whatever. anyway. Communication is, a, is a, it's an ongoing thing. So, my first slide. Well, uh, okay, this is a working title. When I got started with this, I, I'm, I'm having to fit this into all the other distractions, either in my office or at home, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a working title for my sermon, That Vision Thing. So why would I say, why would I not say the vision thing? Why? Well, since you may not hear me correctly and assume that my title is the vision thing, and my desire is to not separate from you, my audience, or to somehow be divisive or divisive, divisive. Hence, my name is Des Hotel. It gets pronounced quite often. There's one guy that when he's nervous and he walks into my office with students, he sometimes called me Mr. De Hostel. <laughs> so I told him at a lunch meeting recently, I said, you know, I just I have compassion for you because I know you're nervous. The parents are there, the kids like, oh, man. So he calls me Mr. De Hostels, but I'm not hostile about it. So my second slide, you don't have to open that link, Kent. Thank you very much, Kent. It's just because, you know, you open a link to something. I, used, I grew up with an encyclopedia, looking for one thing, the alphabetical order. You, go on, you get distracted by so many other things. So you open a link on the Internet. You just you know, look up something, Google, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Vision thing may refer to a quote by U.S. President George Bush, H.W. Bush, referencing his problem articulating a vision for his presidency. It could also refer to a vision thing, an album, but it's actually when I did, I actually did look, at, look further into it, but I'm not going to bore you with it. It's a gothic band, the Sisters of Mercy. Also, you could be distracted by the notion that the vision thing could be a, one of the season's 12th episode of NYPD Blue. Anybody know NYPD Blue? Come on, come on. How about, what's the, what's the one we're watching? Uh, Blue, uh, Blue Bloods, there you go, yeah. On Netflix, awesome, awesome platform. <laughs> so each is very distracting. So that vision thing is what I chose based on the request for my speaking to you today. Third slide. I begin with the first local meeting after our co-pastors returned from a conference in Las Vegas. After some introduction, each participant had a task to complete. We were to write down our answers. They gave us time to watch the little video about it, give us some background, and they were asked to write down our answers to these two questions. Number one, who in your life has intentionally loved you? How did you receive that love and did it inspire you to give more of your own love in the relationship? And secondly, have you, how have you seen Heavenly Parents intentionally loving you in your life? We're writing all our answers down for this. If you were there, did, did you, remember, you remember what you wrote to those two questions? I do, because I have my notes. They're rough notes. You know when you're writing down rough notes, you've got to scratch out. Oh, let me revise that. So it's something we can do. I, in college, did live radio and live television, and you cannot edit. <laughs> the show must go on. <laughs> so today, with technology, we, there's so many, so many distractions. But it's okay. We work with them. Some of you were there, if you recall, um, there was a list given to us. There's also a diagram. We were given a sheet of blue paper, which again I have, but notes on it. Okay, 
truth, beauty, and goodness. And there was a list of three things under each of those. When I was asked, well, what's the really the main point for you today? I said, well, to make this doable, there are nine points, okay? Let's go to the uh, next slide. Next one. Share the word. As I mentioned, the word, vertical, horizontal, you have to entertain people. You have to also realize there's some vertical connection. People have deeper sense of who they are, and some don't. It's okay. Have compassion towards them. So um, I am only going to focus on one in each. There's nine points in the list that we were given. I'm only just going to focus on one item in each of the three. First one would be to offer gratitude. I'm grateful that you're all here. And a couple of people, Mother's Day, I made some cookies. And a couple of people asked for the recipe. And then somebody at my office asked. She said, oh, I remember having those when I was a kid. Ah, you know, so I gave it to her. She said, it's the one, definitely. So I'm offering gratitude for you, to you, making it doable. The next, next slide, offering testimony. I have seven basic questions for Q&A that you would, uh, that I'll go through briefly, very briefly. And I have somebody who's going to remind me when my time is, uh, you got the timer going there? My wife and I since 19, uh, actually 19, we moved here to Connecticut in 1998. But since o October of 2008, we've been proctoring at my community college where I work, proctoring the ACT test. So we tell everybody, you have a certain amount of time left. So then you can start guessing. It's okay on the ACT. SAT is a little different, but it's, it's changing. That is being restructured and changed because of business, because of competition. So in the, fine one, the final one is to do something. I'm going to be doing something. So the seven questions go to the, yeah, I'm going to do something. Let's see what I, next one. Yes, testimony. How did you meet, this is, these are the seven questions, this is just, just the first three. How did you meet the Unification Church? Were you divinely inspired about the coming of the Messiah before you met your spiritual parents? Next, what year did you join in, and what was your age then? What kind of upbringing did you have? Did your family teach you about God, or did you learn it on your own? Learn about God on your own. The next slide. When was the first time you met true parents? And in what circumstances? How many brothers and sisters did you grow up with? And in what sequence do you come in? Oldest, youngest, there's a dynamic about how you develop your personality based on where you are. And the seventh question, were you interested in marriage before joining the church? Or did you feel somehow marriage was not copacetic towards your spiritual endeavors? Copacetic, good word, good word. Copacetic, yeah, grooving with it, okay. Now, more details on, on each one of these. First, how did you meet the Unification Church? Myself, I had finished an undergraduate degree in political science, which included a year at a French university in Moncton, New Brunswick. So if I did a transition here, I would. Wake up, men and women of God. That's not a direct translation. But for here and now, my brother had not completed his degree. He's a missionary in Thailand, been a missionary for about 30 years. No, he doesn't like the UC. Yet. We do respond on Facebook to each other. My brother had not completed his degree, but we decided to drive as far away from Louisiana as possible and start a new life. So California became our goal. I heard a loud voice driving through the desert. He had a brand new Toyota. I had given up my Volkswagen Beetle. It was in bad shape, but he had a brand new Toyota. I heard a loud voice while driving across the street telling me to turn around and go back. But my brother and I, we had agreed, we had an agreement that we would follow through and maybe reevaluate later on. So Mary Beth Rivas, some of you may know her. She's now married to Peter Ross. 
She met me at Powell and Market. I had already secured a job, and she invited me to the center, so I was open. Eventually, probably within a week or two, both my mom and dad wanted to fulfill a dream. They drove to San Francisco, and they walked across the Golden Gate Bridge. They fulfilled their goal. My mother told me, don't decide on this movement until you give it a few days, give it a month. Don't say yes, don't say no. I have already had siblings that had joined various unique, quote unquote, unique groups in America. In America, great, you know, we individualism balanced with the purpose of the whole. Both of my parents drove out to San Francisco, attended an evening program, Yes, and they met uh, one of the songwriters, Sayre, All the Lands That I Love. They met her in person. She got love-bombed. My mother said to give us some time. So she had read a Catholic sociology professor at Loyola, his article about Reverend Moon and our movement. His name was jo Father Joseph Fichter. I met him in person in his office one day many years later. So it was an interesting uh, reverberation vibe with each other. How's, how am I doing with my time? Good? Okay. <laughs> what year did I join? 1977. And what was your age then? I was 24 years old. What kind of upbringing? Now, I came to New England in 1978. The blizzard, if you want to Google it, look up the blizzard of 1978. It was, it was crazy. I came, we went to Holy Ground a few times, and then the blizzard hit. We couldn't go. We walked. Mr. Takashi Kono, my center figure, we walked. We didn't snow ski, we walked to Holy Ground. He was dedicated. So I learned from that. What kind of upbringing do we have? I had a close family, a small town, about 12,000 people. Was it religious? Yes. My mother had been a nun until her final vows when God told her, you can serve me better if you raise a family and have sons who are priests. You know, male denom domination there. You know, no nuns. All right, okay. But in my family, my younger brother became a part of YWAM, Youth with a Mission. And he's been smuggling Bibles into China for many years. And then he became a seminary professor in Thailand. So, whew, hard to get through to that guy. But it's possible. <laughs> he doesn't like a lot of American politics going on these days. So, we, you know, back and forth sometimes. So what was the first time you ever met true parents, and in what circumstances? I was at East Garden and at Belvedere, hearing Father speak a few times, because uh, my mission in Boston, my first mission, actually, uh, we had that opportunity. Also, when I was matched with my wife in December 1980, uh, blessed in July 1982 at Madison Square Garden, and also during the political mission, Top Gun. I met Father a number of times there. How many brothers and sisters did you grow up with? I had three sisters and one brother. Two brothers, two, one brother, he's younger than me and a younger sister. But my two oldest sisters, they are still, uh, we communicate quite often. My oldest sister lives in Louisiana and my other sisters live in Texas. But anyway, uh, one of them maybe never talks to me, but it's okay. We're working on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so. Uh, my first mission, uh, well, I was in Ilwa. I think I mentioned that early on, but uh, my oldest sister had started a health food co-op when I was in college, and my mother joined in that effort. So, you know, the kind of bizarre out on the fringe, where well, I'd already, you know, I'd been there, done that. So the fringe stuff, I, I was comfortable with that. And my parents also started the jogging craze in my hometown. 12,000 people, small town, started the jogging craze. So you got an idea? Okay, now, these seven questions, I did email them to a few of the council members uh, during the week. So if you want to answer them and use them, fine, tweak them, uh, change them, uh, cut them short, add, whatever. So, making this doable, I want to share with you, like I did the uh, cookie recipe. Some of you have got it. Who got it? Who got the cookie recipe? It's a no-bake. That came out of a give and take in my office with someone who, I don't have an oven. I can't make any cookies for this contest we're having. I can't make any cookies. Okay, hey, whoa, let's look on YouTube. There's no bake cookies. Oh, yeah, too complicated. There's no bake, just right on Google. So I found one, 
And it turned out to be exactly the one, one of my coworkers later on, we, just this, oh, the sequence of events is just in interesting. So what slide are we at, Kent? Okay, you can go to the next one. Those are the seven questions. Okay, um, transition. Okay, go to the next one. Oh, wait, right there. Okay. I moved, uh, we moved to Bridgeport. Uh, I came also northeast in 1978, and then this huge storm came, blizzard of 1978. And then in 1998, I also came to the northeast to Bridgeport. Also a similar storm, but it was more a spiritual storm. <laughs> Coming and working at a high school with a bunch of teenagers. It's a storm. But, you know, through storms you make it through. You uh, learn a lot, et cetera, et cetera. Right, Gertrude? You and I were there together. <laughs> so life goes on. You know, we learn a lot. Uh, so Jennings, Louisiana, my hometown, that's where oil and gas was discovered. So the oil industry, that's where it started in Louisiana. Of course, it's now a small town called Evangeline. They have a whole tourist stuff. Evangeline is the name of the town. As I mentioned earlier, I worked at Ilwa Ginseng in several cities around the country. I traveled to Bo started in Boston, went to Cleveland, Denver, Houston, uh, New York, Seattle. Mrs. Desitel did begin her time in the Unification Church with fundraising teams for a few years. Now, I, I went to MFT from California, for, but I was only there for five hours. Carl Swearson was my center figure, and we just started, just we clicked, you know, we just started talking, 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 talking. Next day, they called and they took me away, and I went to New York and started Ilwa, started the business mission. So Beth had completed her study in the seminary for two years, and I did, I did the three-year program. Reverend Hippowitz and I, that's where we met each other, he and his wife. So some of you are familiar with that whole, uh, I got five minutes. Thank you. Next slide. These are, my ch these are our children. Hannah Beth was born home birth in the gatehouse, if you know the gatehouse. She was home birth there. That was, oh, that's a whole other story. Katerina, Abraham, um, Jamil. Jamil is an offering child that we gave to a couple that could not have children. Dawn, she was, usually runs the slides, but she's in New York City today doing some volunteer work. And, of course, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. C'est bon. Her actual name is Bonne Elise en français. The next slide. Uh, gratitude. You remember the list that I had gone through? We had gone through gratitude. So political, the Top Gun was the most exciting thing for me because I had, I had no idea that I was going to be doing political science in a place like Louisiana where corruption is a, it's like a fine gumbo. <laughs> I had previously been in a newsroom with the governor of Louisiana explaining a question about his improprieties and just all of us at the cameras, we pulled back from the eye cup, looked at each other and went like, did he just say that? Yeah, he just smoothly, and the voters forgave him? Amazing. So that's a whole other story as well. But I'm also mostly grateful for something that was explained to me very clearly in Divine Principle, because I had read a lot in French, but I just didn't get it, just it didn't click. Uh, but the part in Divine Principle where it's mentioned is separation of powers. Uh, Montesquieu is mentioned there in uh, the 1973 printing on page uh, 468 and also in the 1996 printing of Divine Principle on page 361. Fascinating stuff right before the, the part on the Industrial Revolution. Of course, now we're in a very different kind of revolution with technology, and so we keep uh, improving. Uh, doing something with my siblings in this case. Uh, my, my, I mentioned that my younger brother, Nelson, is a missionary in Thailand. Uh, we have given take back and forth, mostly about Obama and other things in our, in our American culture that he distanced himself from. He and I both distance ourselves from what we thought was only in Louisiana, but it's everywhere. There are problems with uh, male-female relationships, uh, use of money, et cetera, et cetera, on the public, uh, on the, in the public square. So in this case, what I did was, at a certain point during the current contest for the White House, I asked uh, 10 people, and then I asked eight people, or the other way around, 18, 
it's a voting age. That's when people generally at 18, a lot of kids I meet, they're not registered to vote. Or even if you register to vote, you don't actually go because maybe it's raining or my car, I need gas. You know, a lot of reasons for to not participate. So I posted this question. Now that the race for the White House is where it is, some who have never prayed in their life will begin. Do you agree? you agree? Ooh, you know, you may not like either one of them. It's going to be a long summer. There may be a new candidate. Who knows? I mean, this is a crazy world we live in these days. But God's in control. Our heavenly parents, now we use gender balance, heavenly parents, in control. We just, we want to participate. Be ready. How am I doing with time? Yeah? Okay. Well, am I, what's my last slide there? Okay, I think I mentioned that well, before that. That's the last slide. Body state metaphor. This is something that's attributed to a 6th century dude that uh, only collected tales. He was thrown off of a cliff because of the tales he collected. We most often know the ones with the cute animals. Aesop's fables. He was a Phrygian. And thus my kids know, I often look at the calendar and there's a WTF, right? WTF, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, I'm trying to coin this expression. Why the Phrygians? Why the Phrygians? It's 6th century. But today, Montesquieu updated that to some extent. Divine Principle has a section on it that also updates it to some extent. So, we can, oh, likewise in our era right now, 2016, 2017, who's going to be in the White House? What do we do after the, it's already decided? It's an interesting process. I, over time, have begun to develop a relationship with two of the staff people, Chris Murphy's staff, related to some topics that interest the senator. So how many of us not only don't vote, but don't have a, you know, I want to make it doable. So I took this question from a middle school kid and submitted it to Senator Murphy's staff, the office. So they've responded to me a couple of times, first of all in December 2017, and then, wait, not 2017. I hope he does in 2017. 2014 and 2015, he responded to my question about a specific country and their situation, Burkina Faso, which has a film festival, making films, YouTube, Vimeo, et cetera, et cetera. And now, how many, how many of you know that Amazon now wants to get into the business of making money with movies? Huh? Right? Yes, you followed it? Yes, good. So I haven't mentioned Moringa yet, but we'll get there someday. Okay, finally, there is uh, a video that I would like you to, uh, my time's up. Uh, there is uh, a gentleman who was singing here for Bridgeport Hope School's uh, Culture Night recently. And over time of developed a relationship with him, he was willing to uh, post a video. And it's about, uh, it connects to being able to go beyond your, I'm not going to show it today. You can look it up on your own because just like this sermon, that vision thing, it, it, need, it, it does need a better title. So the title of the video when you search online is Please Improve This. Okay? So please improve on what I've been able to share with you today, the testimony, showing some gratitude. You don't have to do the no-bake cookies. You can take any kind of cookies, cheesecake, whatever. So, and uh, doing something. So appreciate your time. I appreciate your open minds and hearts and ears. Thank you very much. I'll offer a short prayer, closing prayer. Heavenly parents, thank you very much for the patience that you've had with us, training us to feel the depth of your heart when we make mistakes, when we stumble and fall. We pick ourselves up. We're hopeful that others around us will help us with compassion to correct our motivation. In divine principle, we can read about a train on a track. The momentum cannot be slowed down. 
it cannot be slowed down. But a force stronger than the principle comes and throws us off our track. Thank you very much for bringing us to this day, to this setting here in Dana 107 in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We want to, together with each other and with you, Heavenly Parents, build a bridge, be a port. We offer our time together this morning as a community, each as individuals, and as a collective part of a family and a growing lineage of people that are crazy for you, Heavenly Parents. I offer this in the name of our in the name of Clofa and Elizabeth Dessel, Bus Central Family. Adieu.